Here's what's coming up on Strategic Wealth with Matt Dickett. You know, we have so many different mutual fund options within this retirement plan that it's kind of tough to choose which ones are going to be best for you. So why don't you just choose this life cycle fund or this target dated fund. Just pick, you know, the one that's closest to the age that you plan on retiring in. One of the questions that comes up in almost every single meeting that I'll have with an individual or a couple in our office is the question of, should I pay off my mortgage before I retire? Hello everyone and welcome to this week's show. We have an action-packed 30 minutes worth of information and material designed specifically for you. So stick around. Strategic Wealth starts right here, right now. You know, when it comes to investing, you have both factual information and emotional information that individuals have to weigh. So, uh, Dustin, let's talk a little bit about that. You know, I think when individuals look at their portfolios, it's kind of like riding some sort of an emotional roller coaster. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And, and, the, and a lot of times, I mean, what they're doing is, is counterintuitive to what they should be doing because of that. I think I saw a study recently that most investors will kind of do the exact opposite of what they're supposed to do. Yeah. You know, you kind of, uh, when the market is going down yeah. in value, what they end up doing is they kind of sell out because they're afraid that they're going to lose everything. And then when the market starts to rally and go up, that's when they want to invest their money. Right. Because they kind of feel like they're missing out on the big gains. So in reality, what they're doing is they're, in some cases, selling low yeah. and then buying high, which is obviously the opposite of what, uh, what you typically want to do. So I know that we've got a graph that we're going to put up on the screen that talks about this a little bit. Why don't you walk us through some of it? Yeah, it kind of shows some of, the, some of that emotional roller coaster. I mean, we start out with, with when the market's starting to go up and they're thinking, oh, man, they're getting excited. Wow, this is great. I got to buy. And then once once they you know start the market starts to top out and now it's hitting its peak they're thinking I'm on top of the world I'm going to quit I, I'm my rich. job I'm going to retire yeah. in two years yeah right? yeah. It, yeah exactly <laughs> then the market starts to starts to re, I mean it starts to uh, to fall a bit we see a correction yeah. and now they're getting to a point where where they're losing and and they think well I'm I'm just going to hang on for a bit yeah then. I, I can't get out now. I've well, lost too much. Well, I like the words that we have here on the graph. You know, we're talking about, you know, a little bit of in anxiety kicks yeah. in. Yeah. And then that next word that I think really causes individuals to lose a lot more in money or in value in their portfolio than what they should. And that's denial. Yeah. They yeah. start to deny that, well, you know, I, I, I must have made, you know, some sort of a mistake or no, that can't be the case. You know, things are going to get better. I yeah. need to just ride it out. I need to, uh, I need to stick with it. Yeah, this can't be happening. No, no. not at all. No way. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> and then things get a little worse, right? So yeah. then we go into fear, uh, fear and then you start to get a little desperate and then panic. Have you ever met with anybody that's kind of made some de uh, uh, investing decisions at that point with their portfolio when they were kind of panicking? Unfortunately, I have. And, and at that point, it's really, it, that's where we can really help someone out is, is by, by really getting them out of what they're in, you know, risk-wise and put them into something that's, that's much more safe. Mm -hmm. But we would have done it at the top instead of at the yeah, bottom. Well, you know, when you find yourself in a situation where you've actually incurred some losses, because, you know, the market goes up, market goes down. In a perfect world, we would have met everybody at the peak right. and you know, maybe locked in their earnings at that point, locked in their profits. But uh, reality says that's just not always the case. One of these fears that individuals sometimes run into, if you go back and maybe, maybe they haven't lost as much, they're at the a a anxiety stage or the denial stage, you can still make some changes at that point. It's mm -hmm. not too late. A lot of times individuals say, well, I've got to ride this out because I don't want to lock in my losses. Yeah. Well, what we talk to our clients about is at that point, it's a really good time to just do a lateral move. Mm -hmm. you know, like we just said, you, you, you don't want to buy high and sell low. Right. But if you sell low because something's gone down in value, but you reinvest it somewhere else that also is low, yeah. it's kind of a lateral move. You're mm -hmm. not locking in you know, your losses. Th this theory or this idea of locking in your losses meaning, means that you, you, you take a loss on a position and you sell it off and you move that money to cash and, and you've just locked it in. You can never do anything to recover. But if you do a lateral move, you move into something else that's maybe going to be a little less risky, mm -hmm. maybe has some safety nets underneath it so you won't lose as much, there's still opportunity. Right. You know, you can still fix that scenario. But let's keep going. If, if they don't do that and they continue to ride 
the value of their investment down, what, what, what kind of happens next? Almost to the, to the bottom. I mean, right before the bottom, it's, it's inevitable. They're, they're out. I'm, I'm getting out of this. I'm selling. I'm cashing it in. And, and that's, that's what happens is as soon as they do that, well, guess what? The market hits the bottom. I think we refer to that sometimes as kind of like someone's uncle point. Yeah. You know, you have a lot of times advisors that when individuals start to lose money, they start telling you all these things to do what? You know, you need to ride it out. Yeah. You need to stick with It'll it. It'll come back. Don't It'll worry come about back it. in yeah. the long run. You don't need that money right now anyway. It'll be fine. Uh, but at some point, enough is enough. Right. Right. And you get out and maybe now you've uh, lost a lot more mm -hmm. than what you would have lost had you made some uh, earlier decisions or, or, or had made some moves prior to suffering the severe loss. Yeah. Now, now they've sold out. Now, now they're sitting on the sidelines depressed. Yeah. I mean, they, they've just lost 30, 40, 50 percent of their portfolio. Yeah. I'm never investing again. I'm and then after, after depression comes what? Disgust. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. Just, can't believe it. Angry I did that. with yeah. everybody, right? Themselves, right. their advisors. Why didn't they recommend something different? So then what happens after that? Well, that's the dead cat bounce, of, yeah. of course. So the market hits the bottom and, and bounces back. It starts to recover. Mm -hmm. Now, this could take, like we talked about earlier, seven years on average. Mm -hmm. Or longer. As long as 18. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's, it's about getting out at the top in the right time and buying when these dead cat bounce happens. Mm -hmm. Yep. But of course, when, when people see that, they kind of doubt it mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. And then reality sets in as long as the market doesn't go back down in value again. Now, now they're optimistic again. And kind of the, the whole thing starts over. Yeah. Right? That's exactly So right. these are kind of the emotions of investing. I think where we can help individuals is kind of taking the emotional part out of it. Like we said earlier, mm -hmm. when you invest money, you have both factual information and emotional information. A lot of times if you have no organized, coordinated plan or you don't have an advisor that you're working with, mm -hmm. you're going to make some of your buying or selling decisions based on emotion and not necessarily based on what's best for you mm -hmm. in your future. So some of the things that we do is we set price targets for our clients on their investments uh, and we you know, sell things to lock in profits once they hurt or, uh, hit a certain price and then we have safety nets for when the market goes down. And you can't be afraid to lock so in we a, don't, a, yeah. a gain. You, you can't be afraid to lock in a gain and you don't want to be afraid to try and set safety nets underneath it. So not if, but when the market does go down in value, mm -hmm. you've got some protection there. So if you would like to talk with us about how we would help you manage your portfolio and manage these emotions, uh, the next time that the market goes through a correction, maybe a little better than what you've been able to handle it in the past, feel free to give us a call at the office. Remember when life was simpler? When things didn't move quite so fast and the world didn't seem so complex? Remember that? We do. And as the world around us has continued to speed up, becoming more complicated and still a bit uncertain, we have managed to keep things simple, providing sound, easy to understand financial advice and customized roadmaps for the road ahead from tax reduction strategies, investment advice, and guaranteed retirement income you cannot outlive, backed by the claims paying ability of insurance companies. We can be your single point of contact, a single call, a voice you recognize well, and a partner who can be by your side for the entire journey. We can't stop the world around us, but we can help ensure you're prepared for what's to come. To schedule a no obligation meeting, simply contact us today. Let's discuss for a moment life cycle funds or target dated funds. It really means the same thing. Okay, so what life cycle funds or target dated funds are this. If you take a look typically at your 401k, I know a lot of the providers that are out there have added these target dated funds. So it might say target dated 2020 or 2025 or 2030, something of that nature. And, and here's what the logic is behind this type of an investment. It basically is saying, you know, we have so many different mutual fund options within this retirement plan that it's kind of tough to choose which ones are going to be best for you. So why don't you just choose this life cycle fund or this target dated fund? Just pick, you know, the one that's closest to the age that you plan on retiring in and maybe just invest money in that. So they've tried to make it easy for you to where it's hard to make a mistake with your retirement dollars, but we typically will advise against individuals using target dated funds or again, so-called life cycle funds. And there's a few reasons why. You know, the concept sounds great. It sounds really good. As you get closer to retirement, typically what the fund will do automatically, you don't have to do anything, it'll automatically start to shift money away from stocks and into bonds. And that's okay as you're getting closer to retirement, maybe that's reducing the risk a little bit, but we have sometimes in environments where both stocks and bonds fall in value. 
That happened obviously back in 2008, where there were a lot of individuals that had target dated funds that were maybe dated, you know, 2010, or we even saw some that were dated 2005. But during the market decline in 2008, they lost significant sums of value because just because we're moving some money from the stock market over to the bond market doesn't necessarily provide the protection that most people are looking for as they get closer and into retirement. The other issue that I have with these types of investments is they typically come at a higher fee because you have to view them kind of like this. They're basically kind of just a fund of funds. So you have kind of two layers of expenses. You have the life cycle, the life cycle layer of uh, expenses as well as the expenses of the underlying mutual funds that are within that particular strategy. So the concept sounds really good. And if you don't have anybody that you can go to for any advice whatsoever, and you're kind of a novice investor, then using one of these funds might be okay. But if you've got somebody that you can go and talk to, or if you need someone to talk to, you obviously can give us a call at, at our firm, at our office, and we can help you with this. But if you don't have anybody that you can talk to, maybe a life cycle fund is okay. But if you have someone that you can go to and get questions that you might have answered about the allocation within your 401k or 403b, whatever it might be that you have through your employer, I would typically recommend avoiding these life cycle funds. They sound like a great concept, but historically, they just haven't worked the way that they're kind of uh, advertised that they will work. And they do, again, come at an additional cost that can be avoided by just picking other funds that are within the 401k. So if you have questions about this or if you're unsure if you have any life cycle funds, please give us a call at the office. Maybe uh, send us in your statements. We can take a look at it, talk with you either in person or over the phone. It's your retirement. How will you live it? How will you be remembered? Will you be able to take me on vacation? Will you be there for my ball games? Will you teach me your values? Will you be able to play with me? Oh, help me go to college. How will I remember you? Have the retirement you dream about. SWDgroup.com You're on the back nine heading for the clubhouse. Your dreams of spending time with family and enjoying retirement are just within reach. What happens if you end up in the rough? In these uncertain times, it's crucial to be prepared with sound advice. Strategic Wealth Designers is one of Kentucky's premier retirement planning specialists. For a complimentary consultation, call 1-502-653-6080. Strategic Wealth Designers, plan to retire well. Today I want to talk about the three different investment worlds that are out there competing to get you to invest your hard-earned dollar with them. Number one is everybody's real familiar with, with the bank. That's, that's one option you could go and, and talk with the, the, local, the local bank or the local branch and find out what types of investments they would recommend for you. It, it's likely that if you go in there, they're, they're probably going to recommend some sort of CD, whether it be a, a six-month or a two-year or five-year. Now, let's just say that we could find a, a really good CD right now, probably paying somewhere in the 1.5% to maybe 2% in interest if you're, if you're very lucky. The other option would be some type of, of money market instrument. Now, with a money market account, you're probably looking at somewhere around a 0.5% in uh, interest per year. Then another option that we'll hear a lot of, of banks to uh, recommend would be some type of, of variable annuity. Now, with a variable annuity, you could have a year where it could, it could go down in value as well as, as up in value. So the variable annuity could lose anywhere from 20% or it could gain 20% in any one year. So that would be one option that the bank is going to offer. The next route would be to use someone that, that's recommending Wall Street instruments. Now, with, with Wall Street, you're going you're gonna to get recommended some type of, of stock portfolio or it could be a bond portfolio. And we'll see a lot of, of mutual funds, REITs, variable annuities again. Now, variable annuities are, are very popular with, with a lot of the Wall Street firms as well as the bank because they, they pay a, a very good compensation to the, to the salesman that sold them. So let's talk a little bit about the returns on, on a stock portfolio. You could have a year where, where you're down again 20%, or we could have a year like 2008 where it was down 40%. You could also have a year where it's up 20%. Now, with bonds, right now, you're, you're seeing interest rates anywhere from 3 to 3.5% on a bond for, portfolio. 
Mutual funds are going to be very similar to stocks, so they're going to go up with the market and down with the market. So we can see a year where, where we're down 20%. We can also see a year where we're up 20%. ETFs, again, very similar to mutual funds in their performance, so they're, they're following some type of, of an index. Very similar to a mutual fund, except they trade a little bit differently throughout the day. With REITs, that's going to be some type of, of real estate investment. Uh, you, you can pick, figure you're going to make anywhere from 20% to have, a, a, again, a potential loss of 20%. So very similar to the stocks and mutual funds. Again, variable annuities, very similar to the stock portfolio. So there's a lot of volatility there and, and very difficult to plan for a, a consistent income into and throughout your retirement. The next option would be some type of insurance product. Now, insurance, you're going to find any, anything from, from fixed annuities could make, again, in the, in the 3 to 3.5% 3 per year. Now, fixed annuities operate very similar to a CD in the fact that you sign up for whatever period of time that you agreed upon at the beginning of the account, and then you get a stated amount of interest throughout that term. The next option would be some type of an indexed annuity. Now with an indexed annuity, what they're gonna do is they participate when the market is, is going up, but when the market starts to fall, you, you don't lose anything. So you're protected from those downturns in the market. So with an indexed annuity, you can figure you're gonna make somewhere between six and 10% per year on average. Now, some years it could be better than that, others it could be lower, but what you're trying to do is just over time, average somewhere around that 6% that mark. The next option would be a life insurance policy. With life insurance, they're paying usually in the two to, to three percent range. Now, what I see is, is that when, when someone comes into the office and they're, they're working with someone that's an insurance agent, they're gonna have basically all insurance products. However, if I'm working with someone that, that's talked with a, a Wall Street firm, then their portfolio is gonna be comprised of everything that you see here. Now, the problem with that is you always want to make sure that whoever you're going to talk to about financial decisions has all of these tools at their disposal because not everyone is going to fit into an insurance product. Not everyone is going to fit into a Wall Street product. You want to make sure that whomever you're working with has all of those tools at, at their disposal and can recommend what's going to help you get to the goal you're trying to get to. So if you have any questions about your portfolio and whether or not you're allocated in the right positions, please feel free to call our office and or visit our website. You made it. Years of hard work, investing, planning, and now you're here. The long-awaited reward you spent a lifetime looking forward to. But what now? After years of growing estate, now you may want to manage it. Use it to fund your dreams. Make it last as long as you need it and leave some for those you love. So what do you do? Wall Street continues to be uncertain, and some conservative options have dropped through the floor. How do you maintain opportunities for growth and reduce risk of loss for market changes? That's where we come in. We are financial professionals. From investments and insurance products to tax reduction strategies and guaranteed retirement income you can now live, provided by the claims paying ability of insurance companies. You've worked a lifetime to get here. Let us help you enjoy it to the fullest. For an informational guide and consultation, 10 things to know about retirement today. Simply contact us today. One of the questions that comes up in almost every single meeting that I'll have with an individual or a couple in our office is the question of, should I pay off my mortgage before I retire? And the answer to this question really depends on your specific situation, but I can give you kind of some general rules or beliefs that I've got. You know, I typically like to see individuals have their uh, mortgage paid off prior to entering into retirement, but it's not necessarily something that's required. As long as you've got enough cash flow to comfortably pay that mortgage, uh, that can be okay. So ideally you wouldn't have it, uh, but it's okay if you do have to carry a mortgage uh, into your retirement. Now, if you have enough money to pay it off, uh, now the question becomes really two different uh, issues that we have to consider. Uh, the first issue is factually, how do the numbers look? And then the second issue that we have to overcome is kind of the emotions around this decision. So let's talk about the factual information first. You know, if you have a mortgage and let's say the interest is only 4% and maybe if you itemize your taxes, you're deducting some of that interest, so you're getting a little bit of it back. 
you know, you might be better off not paying off the mortgage and investing that money someplace else, earning a higher return than what the interest rate is on the mortgage, and, uh, you know, kind of keeping the, distance, the difference for yourself. So if you can earn more money than the net after-tax cost of the mortgage, uh, maybe you shouldn't pay it off. Now, if you have a high interest rate because of a uh, low credit score or something of that nature, then obviously the math not, might not work. And that's, again, why this is kind of an individual situation, and it's tough to, to give just a blanket statement. It's really something that you need to get an analysis done. But sometimes when we look at the factual information, you can make the argument you're better off just keeping the mortgage. Now, the second uh, thing that you have to consider is really the emotional aspect of it. You know, even though it might make more sense to keep the mortgage because you can earn a higher return on, uh, on those dollars and some sort of an investment, uh, the fact that a lot of people that are out there really like having no debt whatsoever, again, especially as you move closer and into retirement, is very appealing. And I, and I kind of get that. So you have to be able to sleep at night with your financial decisions. So you have both the factual information, but I would probably argue that the bigger issue and the more difficult question to answer is emotionally, how do you feel about it? The one thing that I would caution you against doing, though, however, is taking large withdrawals from retirement plans to pay off the mortgage. Now, if you have money maybe sitting in the bank, earning little to no interest, that's maybe a good place to go and go ahead and uh, pay off any remaining debt that you might have. But you want to be careful of not taking large withdrawals maybe from a 401k or an IRA to pay off your mortgage because when, when you take those withdrawals, that's going to cost you quite a bit of money typically in tax and may even throw you into a higher income tax bracket than what you thought. So usually what's better, rather than taking a large withdrawal and paying it off all at once, I usually recommend maybe you set up a plan where maybe over a three-year or four-year, maybe a five-year uh, time frame, maybe you take some money out of those retirement accounts and put it towards the mortgage. And rather than paying it off all at once, you know, kind of get a game plan that you'll pay it off over several years. But this is a question that, again, is, is kind of difficult to give just blanket responses to or answers to. It really depends on your specific situation, depends on the factual information, and it depends on emotionally what is most appealing to you. So if you have questions about this, if you're unsure what you should do, especially as you're moving closer and into retirement, give us a call at the office. We have an analysis that we can run and then we can tell you specifically for you and your situation what you should do. You're on the back nine heading for the clubhouse. Your dreams of spending time with family and enjoying retirement are just within reach. What happens if you end up in the rough? In these uncertain times, it's crucial to be prepared with sound advice. Strategic Wealth Designers is one of Kentucky's premier retirement planning specialists. For a complimentary consultation, call 1-502-653-6080. Strategic Wealth Designers. Plan to retire well. You made it. Years of hard work, investing, planning, and now you're here. The long-awaited reward you spent a lifetime looking forward to. But what now? After years of growing a nest egg, now you may want to manage it. Use it to fund your dreams. Make it last as long as you need it. And leave some for those you love. So what do you do? Wall Street continues to be uncertain. And some conservative options have dropped through the floor. How do you maintain opportunities for growth and reduce risk of loss from market changes? That's where we come in. We are financial professionals. From investments and insurance products to tax reduction strategies and guaranteed retirement income you cannot outlive, provided by the claims paying ability of insurance companies. You've worked a lifetime to get here. Let us help you enjoy it to the fullest. For a complimentary consultation, simply contact us today. Well, thank you once again for watching this week's show. You know, Dustin, I think it turned out pretty good. I do too. It was absolutely a great show. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact our office and or visit our website. And remember, retirement planning is a journey, not a destination. We'll catch you here next time.